Hi, this is the plant-based nutritionist Kath King from Seeking Health. As many of you know, I'm an eco-nutritionist and holistic health consultant and I've recorded this post today on a topic that kind of makes my blood boil. Um, by now, most people have heard of the paleo trend in eating where animal flesh is the base of almost every meal. And it's a great story based on an image that our caveman ancestors munched on mastodon meat all day. And many people who adopt this meat-based eating style do initially feel better and lose weight. And they do so largely because the paleo principles banish the eating of dairy, oils and refined carbohydrates that obviously our ancient ancestors would never have eaten. And with that, as far as that goes, I'm in full agreement. Um, carbohydrates, which is actually the preferred fuel of the human body, are generally on the paleo enemies list and in fact being in a state of ketosis from metabolizing fat as opposed to carbohydrates is viewed as a good thing. It's not however and I'll tell you why in a moment. <coughs> People who eat in this manner and who like the taste of flesh in their mouth are often very enthusiastic supporters of this way of eating that seems to support what they want to believe and enables them to continue doing what they want. Um, many, as I said, do initially get leaner and also experience a lowering of cholesterol numbers, though many others see their cholesterol numbers going up. Those whose numbers improve take these changes as a validation of this natural way of eating. But I don't find it natural at all. Instead, I think it's an invitation to serious disease and environmental destruction. And here's some of what I find problematic with the paleo approach to eating. First, did our caveman ancestors really eat a mostly meat diet? And although it's a commonly held idea with a kind of colorful image, it's just not true. According to most experts like Nathaniel Dominey, who is Associate Professor of Anthropology at Dartmouth College, the overwhelming majority of calories that kept our ancestors alive in ancient times were from starches in the form of roots, tubers, bulbs and wild grasses and these were mostly gathered by the women of the tribes so in fact we it's more accurate to describe our Paleolithic ancestors as gatherer hunters rather than hunter gatherers. <clears throat> now all plants make and store starches and there is a reason that over the millions of years before humans appeared our primate ancestors developed starch digesting enzymes, enzymes called amylases, in our saliva that begins digesting starches down to more usable sugars actually in our mouths. And this process occurred after we came down from trees. Prior to that, when we, like other primates, lived up in the trees, we ate a fruitarian diet with some tender leaves. But when we came down from the trees, we also began eating a lot of starches and our grinding teeth, we don't have flesh tearing fangs and our long digestive system are very efficient for processing both fruits and starchy plant foods. Our pancreas pours amylase rich juice into the gut with every meal and amylases cascade off the walls of the small intestine into the food stream throughout its 22 foot length. Carbohydrates from whole fruits and whole starches are very clean burning fuels, leaving only carbon dioxide and water as wastes, and these are easily excreted by the lungs and kidneys. But flesh is a very dirty fuel, 
It leaves behind urea, ketones, uric acid, and other metabolic burdens that can stress the liver and build up to disease producing levels resulting in things like gout, kidney stones and other even more serious diseases. Um, burning fat heavy fuels places one in a state of ketosis um, and this is something that is sought after by paleo promoters as being a good thing. However, Keeping one's metabolism in a state of ketosis, which is actually an emergency state that the body enters during times of starvation, is not a good thing. It is a state of low-grade acidosis, and being in ketosis day after day, week after week, forces the body to constantly dispose of an acid load that can leach calcium from the bones and precipitate kidney stones. So despite what the paleo promoters push, we are not carnivorous apes. The paleo diet would have us, us ghoulishly swallow chunks of flesh every five hours as part of our meat-based natural diet. My gosh, not even mountain lions eat flesh every five hours. And no other primate eats flesh like this, and the health consequences can be quite severe. Um, often chimps are cited as evidence that we are meant to consume meat because they are our closest um, relatives. But a chimp's diet actually contains a maximum of 5% meat and 90% of that are things like insects, the termites that, that they might eat. Um, chimp meat eating tends to be very sporadic and is distributed randomly over the year with most months having no or minimal consumption and not all chimps eat meat. Um, if someone asked me how to cause colon cancer, I'd tell them that it was easy, just pack the colon full of meat three times a day and let that rub against the colon wall for a few decades and then see what happens. The connection between red meat consumption or any meat consumption and colon cancer has been evident for a very, very long time. Now, an often overlooked consequence of a flesh-based diet is that the food you eat determines the bacteria that live in your gut. So if you eat sugar on a continuous basis, you will summon up a population of sugar eating bacteria and yeast in your gut. But if you drop chunks of animal flesh down your gullet three times a day, you will summon up a population of bacteria such as um, Clostridia and Peptostreptococcus that love to eat carnitine, which is a major constituent of animal flesh. And so what, you might ask, but these gut bacteria turn the carnitine in meat into trimethylamine, which your liver promptly oxidizes into trimethylamine oxide. And this is a molecule from hell that drives cholesterol into the artery walls and it promotes plaque formation in arteries throughout the body. Um, so that, that healthy looking young paleo guy sweating in the gym is likely actually laying down plaque in his arteries with every steak he gobbles up. And people who eat plant-based diets do not form trimethylamine. And even if a vegan were at one time given a steak to eat, because that they don't produce trimethylamine because they don't actually have the bacteria that eat the carnitine. Um, elevated cholesterol levels may initially decrease on a paleo diet, and this is due to weight loss and a lack of refined sugars, but before this falling total cholesterol level is interpreted as a mark of improving health, just remember that the question is not how high is your cholesterol level, but rather how healthy are your arteries. And so these people may watch their total cholesterol 
go down, but the real question is what's really happening on the inside of the arteries. Their artery walls are likely being assaulted with atherogenic oxidized cholesterol particles with every single meal. And this sets off a cascade of events that leads to blood clots, pl blood clots blocking arteries, heart attacks, stroke and early death. Now beyond spawning artery plaques, the bacteria fostered in a flesh-based diet can also injure your gut lining and allow food proteins to leak into your bloodstream. And this triggers autoimmune diseases from arthritis to allergies to eczema. So health-wise, far from being a natural health-promoting diet, I believe the paleo diet is setting its practitioners up for an epidemic of colon cancer, clogged arteries, heart attacks, strokes and autoimmune diseases. More than that though, ecologically the paleo approach is a completely elitist, non-sustainable dietary pattern conceivable only because industrial meat production doesn't, isn't required to pay the full price for the ecological destruction and the healthcare costs associated with consuming it. In, are paleo people really proposing burgers and steaks three times a day for nine billion people? It would take more than two planet Earths with all of Earth's resources to provide such a prodigious amount of animal flesh for the entire human population. But the real problem is that it would destroy our planet's ecosystems that are already teetering towards destruction under the pressure of industrialized meat production. So in my opinion, the so-called paleo diet is a diet of destruction. Destruction of billions of animals leading to the destruction of the humans who eat them and ultimately to the destruction of our planet's ecosystems upon which we all depend, depend for life. So is the paleo diet the way of the future or even of the past? And I really don't think so. I urge you not to be seduced by the donut half-truths of the paleo promoters. Instead, there is solid scientific evidence that a whole food plant-based diet with far less death and destruction involved in its production and consumption is the truly healing diet for people and our planet. And if you're interested in making a change to a plant-based diet but are not sure how or would like to improve the plant-based diet that you currently eat, then please contact me for a free initial consultation. Um, I do these either in person at my office in Christchurch or over the phone or via Skype. So thank you for listening today and until next time, eat clean, eat plant-based and here's to health, happiness and peace for people and for planet.